Capital Gang on 91.3 Capital FM. And welcome to the Capital Gang. I am Oscar Semwea Msoke, and welcome to the show. In the studio, I have Keith uh, Kalijia. You're most welcome to Capital Gang, Keith. Keith uh, thank you, Oscar. Keith is the CEO yes. of uh, Capital Markets Authority. Uh, Ofano Pondo is also in the studio. These days, he looks sharp in his um, checked shirts. Um, you're most welcome to Hot Gang Oh. Hmm? Thank you. Welcome to Capital Gang Abdul Kachuntu, <laughs> Honorable. Madam President, welcome to Capital Gang. Thank you. We the Parliament because Parliament is sitting. I'm on my way to Parliament. Hmm. Keith, welcome to Capital Gang. Uh, Keith uh, Kaleja is the Chief Executive <laughs> Officer of Capital Markets Authority. And this morning we'd like to discuss... I don't know whether they're twins with another Keith Kareji right now. Keith... Uh, Timothy. Timothy, yes. Oh. And the other Keith who's in finance is not Kareji. Uh, uh, I'm it's sure you're a kid, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, Abdu. No, 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 no. Abdu, the other Keith in, in finance is, 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 is not Kareji. No, his name starts with an M. I was, I was just uh, being on... Uh, stubborn to, to mm. Keith because Chica actually, because actually Tim is my contemporary at university and they've mm. known each other since he was, he was in Damasagari, I was in Mwiri, so. There you go. Um, you're also most welcome, uh, one of our favorite gangsters, Mr. Full James Mungereza. You're most welcome to Capture Gang. Keith, um, in, in, in Uganda today, a, a cash economy uh, when the budget is presented it will go up to 24 trillion and here you are the CEO of Capital Markets Authority um, it's a hard sell our topic today is biz op opportunities um, via CMA why aren't we grabbing those opportunities what more can you do as the Capital Markets Authority okay um, thank you. And I'm, and, and I'm putting to you that you have a tough task. Yeah. Mm. So, good morning, listeners. Um, essentially... Oh, 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 he's whispering here, what market, what market? He has his question. Because the listeners would want to know what is a capital market. Okay. And Oscar hasn't asked him. No, no, he's, he's, he's <laughs> getting in there. A capital market essentially is where servers and uh, investors get together. Um, you know, servers who are looking for where to invest, you know, come to a capital market. And, and issuers who are looking at raising capital, you know, bring their, 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 their issues to the capital market. So it's really a, market, a, a meeting place where the servers and investors get together. It's, it's, a, it's the, the arena, essentially, where the two get together. Um, mm. And the sort of people who should be looking for capital there are, you know, big businesses who are looking for patient capital. I think the operative word is patient capital, and I'll use that word uh, several times. Um, I've just heard that most of the problems facing SMEs in Uganda uh, is, is lack of capital. Mm. But if you really think about it, it's not lack of capital. It's lack of patient capital. Mm. Because most of bank finance is, is quite impatient. Uh, from the time you take a loan, you've got to service it every month going forward. And sometimes you don't know when your revenue is going to kick in. So the, the, the operative word here is special capital. What sort of capital do you need where in case of the delay in your revenue getting realized, um, you, could, you wouldn't have to sell your assets to pay back, you know? So that's really the operative word. And here we're talking about equity financing, primarily through the capital markets, because servers tend to be a bit more patient. If you're looking for a return of, you know, in excess of uh, inflation, in excess of the prevailing treasury bill rates of return, uh, that is the place to go, because mm. we've done an analysis that has shown that uh, between the return on in the capital markets has been between 14 and 22 percent on average since the first stocks were listed in Uganda in 2000. Between mm, 22 percent per annum on average, yeah. but the returns tend to be higher on some of the, the stocks for those for the more active investors. Um, so far, we've got only eight companies listed on the stock exchange: uh, power company, three banks, an insurance company. Um, 
we need more companies. You know, mm. countries that like Zambia that have the same GDP as Uganda have about 23 or 25 companies listed. Uh, we've got only eight domestic companies listed. We need more. Um, mm. that's, so we need to do it. I mean, we need to basically raise awareness yes. of, uh, of big businesses. But but Ofarapon is now understanding where I was coming from, saying that you have a tough job on your hands. Mm. Because, yes, we, we, we are a cash economy. We, we have money and very few people would like to save or have ability to save. And at the same time, our money, our, the value of our money keeps uh, fluctuating. Right now, I don't know how we can compare it with the dollar. So sometimes it do just doesn't make sense to save. You know, uh, that issue of the value of money, I did an analysis recently. We did an analysis as Capital Markets Authority mm. uh, over the past 25 years. And the shilling has lost an average of 4.35% per annum over the mm. past 25 years. Mm. Yes, sometimes it's volatile. The times when it gains, 2005, six it was gaining actually against the dollar. Um, so what we're seeing of recent is, just, is some volatility mainly because of the dollar strength, mm. not because of the shilling weakness. So look at 25 years, 4.35% per annum is not bad really, mm. to save in Uganda shillings. So you're saying it is okay for people to be saving in Uganda shillings? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Even now, right now, with the volatility of the market? Um, if you're a long -term this saver. is national radio, you know, and yeah, people remember the things if Keith Pelletier said. You're medium, if you're a medium to long term saver mm. and you can write out the volatilities, it's okay to serve in the Ghana shilling. Mm. The, the important thing is the trends. If you look at the trends, what are they telling you? And figures don't lie. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and um, there's a feeling that capital markets are stringent and your requirements are a little too tight, perhaps tighter than banks anyway. Yeah. So, is that one of the reasons why you're not attracting that many companies? Yeah, obviously, if you're exposing your company to investors who know nothing about your company, you've got to be sure that uh, you're disclosing everything that's going on in your company fully. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the right decision-making structures in place at board level, at management level, because you're putting people's money at risk, and our primary uh, mandate is investor protection. So, yes, it's stringent, but there are benefits. Uh, once you go through, once you get used to operating uh, pro professionally, it becomes even easier for you to raise capital, whether it's private equity or public equity in the capital markets. So it's only in the interest of businesses to organize themselves to be able to raise uh, capital. Even if you're not going to go to ca come to the capital markets, it's, it's, it's important to be organized enough to, to, to attract investors mm. in your business. Mm. And no one's going to invest in your business if it's opaque, if it's uh, unclear. But, but that's our, that's Uganda. Our business is mostly opaque. Of it's a here has a, a, a poultry farm. Uh, uh, he also rears the other animal that Abdul wouldn't like him to rear. And, and, but all that business is very opaque, he, and it is unlikely that he will clear that up. I think people like Ofono, uh, if they want to grow, they mm. have to style up, they have to organize themselves. But if they want to remain small and in control of something small, that's also, that's also a personal choice. Mm. But if you want to take advantage of the opportunities in the market, the growing population, you know, all the opportunities that exist, you know, if, you, if you really want to grow, you need to organize yourself and you know, mm. make yourself attractive to investors. Mm. And those are, that's all we're asking for. <laughs> the same requirements we have are the same requirements most investors would have anyway. Mm. And Keith, you, you're at uh, Capital Gang, Ugandans are listening to you. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's tough for them to really connect with you. For example, if you compare us in the East African community with Kenya, we are, and that's why you didn't even go there. You mentioned Zambia first. We're, we're, we're like babies, and yet we're in the East African community. Yeah. You know, the, the Kenyan economy is a big economy. The GDP of Kenya is about 70 billion. Uh, Uganda is about 25, 26 billion. Uh, and the capital market has been around for the past 51 years. They have about 60 companies listed. So they've been around for some time. We've been around for about 16 years. Uganda's capital market has been around for about 16 years. Uh, so we're getting there. In, in the next 24 years, I don't think we shall be where we are right now. And that's that day. <laughs> yes. I mean, in comparison to how long Kenya has had a capital market, yes. we, want, we want to be where we are certainly. How many has Kenya listed right uh, now? Kenya has had a capital market for the past 50, 51 years. The Nairobi yes. Stock Exchange started in 1951. Mm. Yeah, 60 years actually. So they're, 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 they're well ahead of us. They're well ahead of us. It's not, it's not a fair comparison. Mm. So for, company, for countries that with a similar GDP to Uganda. <laughs> yes, but then we're supposed to be related to Kenya through the East African community. Yeah. But Fulgence Mungereza is here, and he's in the world of finance. Uh, Fulgence, the, you, we can ask you uh, more direct questions, because yes. Keith here is uh, with CMA, so he's contracted to say good things. Yes, There's this issue of Umeme, and whereas some of us understand uh, where Umeme is coming from, and people that have shares, like I don't know if Ofonopono has shares, 
but his usual my usual uh, example here people who have shares are smiling yes but uh, uh, there have been many complaints abdul's committees have spoken about umeme and there's a lot of airtime in uganda politics about umeme no remember i don't think they are complaining about the investment there no actually oh. the investment i i remember i bought the, just a few shares there and uh, <laughs> i had a problem with my bank and i went and uh, sold off my uh, oh. <laughs> quickly that the was a mistake with, because women is paying out well, now. Well, even the money I had to put there was not so much. Mm. The problem with women is not the investment. The investment mm. is good. People are getting uh, some good return on the investment. Those who did. But you know, we are uh, very, very backward. Our economy is very informal. And this informality doesn't help us to, to grow. Uh, so the, the problem is, who is women? That's the main problem we have. Who is women? How did it come? What uh, the, the people think that they are being cheated uh, by women? When you see how they came in and what they are doing to us, they, they feel they are being cheated. Those are the ordinary people who pay their women bills and all that. But those who put in a little money to invest, uh, those are getting a return. But those people who came in and took on women which was a, a mistake as far as I'm concerned. Government made a mistake to bring in some foreigner that he, he manages Umeme and bring Umeme. We were running uh, this uh, sector properly, uh, but yes, it had some problems here and there, right, but it was, it was okay. What they needed is to improve it. Yeah? It is prove it. You don't uh, come and uh, just throw away things. And you know what is happening? They kept using some funny excuses that, you know, they were they advised that the government does not run a business. Then they give it a government company. Remember, it's a government company. It's a subsequent company, a government. So how, how do you, can't you think through that? You know, when you look at all these, the, the way they interfered with our economy, uh, most of the things, the sectors which were there, the private sector, I mean, the uh, actual public companies. You look at, at, at UCB, the way they managed to, I don't know what they did. And sometimes I really get very emotional when I hear about these things. Because I have been dealing with this economy for a long time. I've audited the, all these companies. Remember, uh, UCB was my client. Uh, UCB was my client. I knew what was going on. A few things here and there, but they, we do not, we do not have to say the move or to close them completely. You know, the worst, the worst, the worst. I wish someone could be listening. The worst, which I will never, I will, I'm saying, I wish someone who is involved could, could be listening. The worst, which made me annoyed every time I think about it, I get annoyed. Is Yuji? Eh? Ninety. Ninety. UG, oh, the native was the biggest employer there yes. in the East. So this is dollars we have been doing. I got involved with it. If I, we had the time and I tell you the story, mm. you'd cry. Yeah? <laughs> you know, it was terrible mm. what they did. So this, uh, sometimes I think our leaders, either they, it's, I don't know whether it's ignorance or whether it's uh, uh, a lack of... Uh, of what? Oh, it's deliberate. Mm. That's how they killed our cooperatives. That's how they killed these companies. Yeah. You know, you wonder what, what type of people okay. do we so have. So, Keith, what kind of answer do you have to that? You see, <laughs> uh, Fujians is in the financial world, yes. very comfortable in the financial world. And then he tells you, uh, people like you have brought foreigners saying that there's investment here. And now your theme is driving growth. So how, how do you... Well, I think what is the CEO now of driving growth? That, that, that uh, Mr. Mujereza's uh, response is really way beyond, my, beyond me. I think that's for privatization unit. It's mm. a much bigger, uh, much broader discussion. Yes. But, as well, as but the as, aspects that relate to you... That as far as I'm concerned, uh, when Umemi came to the market, they disclosed everything that they had to disclose. We insisted that they disclosed more than they had actually disclosed. We were satisfied that they disclosed everything they had to disclose who approved their prospectus to issue shares to the public. Um, and as he admits, Mr. Mojeres admits, those who invested are quite happy. Um, 
You know, this, this will limit to how much the government can invest, with, especially in infrastructure, in revenue-generating infrastructure. Um, and indeed, they did demonstrate that they are going to make several investments. Uh, whether they have done or not, that's another discussion with the Registry Regulatory Authority. That's their job. We regulate the capital markets to make sure that investors' money is safe. And uh, that's what we continue doing. And driving growth? Driving growth. Because you, 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 you need to pay attention to what uh, Fujian Mungeza is saying. Otherwise, you, we will not get that growth. Um, driving growth, that is the theme of our strategic plan, um, and growth essentially is trying to attract more and more companies to the capital markets, to make them more aware of the mm -hmm. benefits of coming to the capital markets to raise uh, funding. I think there's a big problem of lack of awareness, but also the reality is the bulk of our companies in Uganda are multinationals. The bulk of our, the largest companies are multinationals who don't really need uh, capital. Uh, if they want to raise capital, they can raise capital through their, their stock exchanges. Many of them are listed in their countries like you know, MTN. Uh, Hima Cement, Lafarge, and many others, Barclays Bank. Most of these big companies are already listed wherever they are. Mm. So they have access to fairly cheap sources of capital. Uh, but this is really an, <coughs> it's really an appeal. Um, Meme is, is also, they do have access to capital, but uh, I, th I think it's also an opportunity to tap into the local savings. <laughs> and earlier on, when you talked about savings, Ugandans uh, being unable to, to invest, we're also looking at predominantly contractual savings. Uh, we're looking at how big NSSF's funds are growing. Uh, I estimate in the next five to, to seven years, there might be at about 13 or 14 trillion, the current rate of growth. Also, because of the liberation of the pension sector, there's going to be a lot more money in, in savings. So that's the money that, what, that the cap, uh, they, should, they should be tap, tapped into the capital markets, mm -hmm. they should be invested in the capital markets. You're not looking at uh, the regular invest the me and you, you know, we're looking at fairly high net worth individuals, people who can afford to wait. Um, but if your net worth is, say, below 100 million, where net worth is uh, your assets less liabilities, excluding your residential house, um, then it might be a little bit tricky. And I have to, be, I have to admit that it may not be, you know, prudent for you to come directly into the capital markets uh, as an individual. You can invest small amounts through the unit trusts because they can put aside 100,000 every month uh, over time. Uh, but for direct investments, um, you need to be, you know, fairly, you need to be a fairly high net worth. Mm. Okay. We'll stop for a break. And uh, I, I, I see Ofanopono smiling because he's going to say NRM has enabled all these things to happen. But um, we, after the break, I'll go to the politicians, Abdul Katuntu and Madam President here, on really the relevance of CMA and how CMA can achieve its theme of driving growth. Stop for a quick break. The Capital Gang on 91.3 Capital FM. Welcome back from the break. Uh, machinery, are you looking for machinery or spares? Contact F&B Solutions Limited, the supplier of Indian machinery and spares for agro, food and beverage sector. All types of processing and packaging machines and spares are supplied. They're located on Madvani Foundation building which is opposite Nema House. The F&B also provide repairing of machines and consultancy services plus turnkey solutions for any food and beverage project. If you need to import any of that, contact them. There's also the private sector business directory 2015 which is out. The directory has a wider reach and is distributed throughout the entire country. Manufacturers, traders, entrepreneurs, companies, SMEs, government agencies, Find them at the Private Sector Foundation Uganda in Nakasero. In fact, Abdu, this morning I, I did call you to see if I could get a lift from you on the way because my my car wheel, my car tire nearly flew off and it was um, good uh, border border people that stopped me saying you're about to cause a massive accident. And and I stopped and indeed the, the, the front tire was coming off so I came by border border. So I should be accessing these uh, services. Hmm. Uh, but on to Keith. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I was thinking, oh, I was thinking about the goodness of people, because people tell you that if people are pointing at something... Uh, <laughs> and, and if you heard my last comment, the goodness of people, because these were people on Boda Boda by Freedom City, they stopped me and said, you see, <laughs> but the, 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 the wheel would have gone off, whether day, evening, night. So I needed their attention. Yes, and then they attack. Yeah. 
But if a wheel comes off, then they will surely attack. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, um, uh, Abdul, uh, Keith, Keith's mission at CMA is driving growth. But um, when I think about you and Idudi, and um, he has even given a qualifier that uh, for a company to list, you'd need to be thinking that you can save 100 million for a while. No, not save 100 no, million the investor, for a while. Investor, the investor. investor, sorry, yes, yes, yes. an investor. Mm, so, but you know, when I think about it, the, the one house with a gate, um, <laughs> Keith College <laughs> is, is not going to be famous in, in Idudi. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> he, he was not meant for Idudi anyway. Yes. <laughs> Though, but you see, the yeah, point yeah. I'm raising is that he's working with MPs from Idudi. I have one from Idudi here. Mm. Then I have a government spokesman from Molanda. Then uh, 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 Semuju, where is Semuju, Semuju? But, uh, but he has a school in Kochi that she has given away to government. Th these are the people Keith has got to work with. <laughs> yeah, but you see, as Keith tells you, he's just running a market. Mm. A, a market where, From where? you know, uh, companies yeah. that uh, are doing very brisk, good business uh, in the market and say, look, yeah, we're here. If you have a little bit of money, come and invest with us. And then as the company grows, even you, your little investment grows. I think that's, you know, I just he was speaking so much economics and uh, I thought that was quite unfortunate. When you're on a radio like this, please speak is and was such that everybody follows you. Uh, the, 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 the likes of uh, the one speaking that is the fault, those EPTs and so on, and the prospectors and so on, yet the listeners out there don't. So, you see, at the beginning of every transaction which they have, they, they have been, I think, on radios and said, look, yeah, this company is, is, is listing and so on. Come and invest. They are doing this and so on. And the rules, actually, when you look at their rules, they are so strict. That is assuming they follow them. You know, full disclosures and so on. So that the person investing in that particular company knows very well, you know, how healthy the company is. Um, but to go back to this very specific case of Umeme, there are two points of conversation. Number one, Umeme as a company, and like uh, Mr. Mungereza was saying, you know, it negotiated a one-side one -side agreement. Uh, cuts of the weaknesses is within our government officials. We are negotiating this contract. So they got one of the best deals ever, business deals. Yeah, you know, literally guaranteeing no loss and where there is a loss government comes in puts in money and so on something which no you know reasonable economist if he was really negotiating properly would have signed that sort of agreement but anyway they did and and there we are stuck with that uh contract for many many years i, I don't know uh if you may manage 20, 20 years. 20 years. 2004. Yeah, 20 years. Now, when they go to Keith, say, well, here we are. First of all, they needed to raise more money because they, they, could not, they didn't have enough m money to fulfill some of the uh, obligations <coughs> they had created within their contract. So they go to the market, uh, Keith's market. And I can tell you, anybody who knew more about that contract would just rush it because it was a very good business. And I'm... Um, Whoever went in there is making money because they had been tied to a very, very unfair contract to government, to the people of Uganda. But the company itself now was doing brisk business, you know, no losses, whatever it is. The, the, the investments put in were not, could not even be monitored and so on. So <coughs> that's why when the MPs were quarreling with the NSSF, actually it was a very good decision to invest because NSSF made big, big money. What they are quarreling, and, and I think some of these little fellows, I don't know, is even when you want to do business, why don't you do it properly? According to the rules. Because it's good business, follow the rules, and you can make the same money. But you start working like somebody from Umulanda, you have to bypass the rules and so on. It doesn't make sense. So, I think they are growing. Uh, and as, uh, Many of these uh, economies are growing, and there is no they will grow without you know uh, companies being listed on on, on on cases market, and so they will also grow. And most not many of these companies, 
which lack adequate capital or they need recapitalization and so they always go to the market and and uh, many people who have some money just go look at it and if you have four five hundred million shillings and so on you don't uh, have anything to do it throw it there because these are what we call idle investments in my view just do the calculation throw it there and you go back to Mulanda and, uh, and you start drinking Malwa. So uh, uh, then, then, then you're making money. Those who invested in DFCU, yes, uh, one of the woman of them was telling us. You know, he put in ten million shillings for four people. At uh, w which year was? Two thirty. So we bought at two thirty in two thousand four. Two thirty. Uh, now I'm sure the whole thing is uh, one thousand. The price now is uh, the equivalent of one thousand eight hundred. One thousand eight hundred. about nine times, mm. eight and a half times. Yeah, but at the same time. Projected to 15 percent. Um, take an average of even if you take 10 percent inflation, that is still a very good investment. Yeah, it would still it would still be very good investment in my view. But uh, wh where I want to agree with, with Keith, you know, this is not somebody who wants to put in money and he wants money after six months. <laughs> oh, I want money after uh, you know one year. It may make a little bit of uh, it, it may not all that be sensible to be doing that. Mm. Uh, the, the economy mainly being informal mm. is difficult and uh, most people are small uh, small savers and when you go to save when you are small it does not make sense yeah. when you go to you know, capital market so is, you know and but there also Ugandans we uh, sometimes I don't know what happened to us if, like for instance Uganda craze I remember getting involved when they he went to go to, uh, to, to his market. I uh, prepared some of the papers. I don't know what went wrong. Now Uganda claims is right on the, on the, you know, is collapsing, uh, which is a, a surprise. Uh, yeah, but Mr. Mungere, the businesses are like <coughs> others grow, others collapse. Yeah, but you, you see, uh, in fact, that's why in some other economies they come in, buy them, yes. capitalize them, streamline the management, and they take off. The, that's true. That's true. But you see, sometimes I think the, the, the Ugandans, uh, I don't know, uh, they ignorance or what, or, uh, or <laughs> corruption, <laughs> yeah, or corruption, I think, or both. Or both, <laughs> yes, or both. You know, that's why... It, it no, 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 in fact, I... I such a yes. good company, and yeah. I don't see why it should be collapsing. There's and a story uh, there, actually. Is, mm -hmm. is it listed with you? No. It is. Uganda Clays was listed at the equivalent of about 4,000 shillings. Uh, you know, if you factor in the fact that the share splits, uh, it now comes about 4 shillings equivalent. Mm. Right now it's trading at 18. So those who invested initially still are still at a, at, a, at a premium above their initial investment it's only those who came in much later when the price was say 60 shillings or 120 shillings that are really really bleeding um, mm -hmm. so it's really a question of uh, it's unfortunate that they came when the price was so high but uh, mm -hmm. that's that's the market so that's why it's important that you understand what you're doing uh, when you get into the market you have to read the market very well yeah you need, ad you need advice it's important yeah. that you get advice from any of our licensed investment advisors or stock brokers and look at the numbers you're talking about the numbers of uh, investors Right now, we have only, we have only about 40,000 investors, uh, savers in our capital markets. That's a very small number compared to Kenya's roughly 300,000. Uh, so we really have a lot of work to do to get more and more. No, but look at but the Kenyan economy. Yeah. You are uh, until like uh, uh, a third of the yes. Kenyan economy? A third, a quarter. Of a quarter, yes. Mm -hmm. And then I, I don't see any problem there. Is, is Uganda Clay is one of the eight? <coughs> Uganda Clay is one of those companies listed, yes. The eight yes, companies. Yes, yes. And it's the very first to company to be listed. Actually. Uganda Clay is reeling. It, it is in a bad shape. For now. For now. For now. Most of them are management. You know, Uganda Clay was such a a major player in the economy. Mm. You know, a lot of people needed their products. Mm. You know? <coughs> but, uh, you know, of course, when if there's uh, something goes wrong, some, uh, you know, governance goes wrong, and, uh, you know, people <laughs> mismanage these companies, and they, they, they go down. And, they've they've, uh, they've had was, court cases. I know yes, that Abdu is very reluctant yeah. to... But then, like uh, to if, you, if you compare yes. our economy with Kenya, I mean, mm. you are... You I compare, you, case you, you could think... No. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, but because I lived in Kenya uh, for some years, those uh, bad days, uh, and uh, you know, I, I could see what was happening there. Mm -hmm. People were really making money, 
And uh, also what was also annoying, some of them were making money from Uganda. <laughs> and uh, you know, and I remember one from time from when Sudan. I wrote a, a I don't know how uh, that uh, is annoying. Mm. Yeah, fellowship. And uh, when we wrote a fellowship, and we uh, said, oh, we made money. If, when I told him oh, I'm from Uganda, blah, blah, I was sitting with him, with my wife. And then this man said, oh, we made money those days from Uganda. <laughs> I think I mean, it's time. Yeah. So annoyed, but <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was. <laughs> yeah. we, let's stop for a break, and then we'll go on to Madam President, who's going to pick up uh, from where Abdul has left off. Capital Gang on 91.3 Capital FM. Welcome back from the break, Madam President. <laughs> the <laughs> I was Capital Markets Authority, yes. picking yeah. up from where Abdul left off. Yeah, that was a very interesting topic just before. Yeah. Was told, but, <laughs> 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 but uh, before I get to Abdul Oscar, yeah. I'd like to pick up from uh, uh, Mr. Mungereza's uh, frustrations, mm. which are, you know, typically in Uganda. In Uganda uh, and I think this uh, statement, people are getting tired of it from me. Mm. Uh, now I've realized we always deal with consequences and symptoms instead of uh, problems and their causes. So we end up with the wrong diagnosis and, uh, and prescriptions. I remember in the 60s the argument was that government had to get involved in business because there wasn't enough capacity. We had not, the private sector had not developed capacity to get involved in business. Mm, so yes. government got involved in business. Hence, St state trading corporation. Actually, strategic business. Yes, strategic. No, actually, it was strategic. To the economy. So we had the state trading corporation, I remember. We had the UDC. We had the cooperatives. We had, um, you know, all these things that... Uh, UDC was the, uh, that, that government... Yeah, but the, 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 the principle was that government needs to get involved in business and investment because there wasn't capacity in, in the private sector to do that. So government got involved. In the 70s, of course, it went down, but still, you know, it was still, it, it was there. You did see the companies were, were all there. And although the economy was going down, Anyway, that's not what I wanted to say. In the 80s, in the 80s, they were finally brought down by politics and patronage. This patronage we talk about now did not start today. Because I remember in the 80s, that's when I started to work. All the UDC companies had to be manned by UPC managers who, uh, uh, and the uh, UPC uh, chairperson, each organization had the UPC chairperson, I remember because that's when I started working and in each organization, Nighty, Leather Turning, wherever I was working Actually, by was even MP, all MPs, including uh, DPs had, was That's how, how, how Sam Kutesa ended up in the Uganda Raiders uh, That is how Johnny Kawanga ended up in Uganda Raiders, but all DPMPs were on the boards On the boards? Yes, oh, all oh, of them oh, And okay. that's how Enos is recruited by some Kutesa in Uganda Raiders. So, politics and patronage, politics and patronage in business and investments brought us to a level where we even needed a ministry, I think, of uh, essential commodities. Did we have? No, supplies. <laughs> supplies and essential By Moses Apiriga. Apiriga. <laughs> I think nobody over 40 or 50 will ever forget Minister of Supplies and Moses Sapiga. Mm -hmm. We had to line up for chips mm -hmm. and chips and came to be in from the, the, the right place. You needed to know someone to take you to somebody to give you a chip. Mm -hmm. You know, now, if that was the problem, poor politics, patronage, <laughs> that was the problem. Now, instead of <laughs> correcting that problem, NRM came in and said, government can't do business and sold them all off. Instead of correcting the problem that was created by bad politics. They, you know, they, they just gave away and, and, and all the And the majority were given to themselves. To themselves. They, they, they gave them to, to, to themselves. So I, I think we really need to understand where that, you know, the, the problem came from. 
So the intervention of, um, I don't know at what point, um, whether Uganda ever had a, a CMA which collapsed. I mean, if <coughs> Kenya had it for 51 years, where, what were we doing no, before was, the collapse was, of the... I was started only in 1996. That's when the stock exchange was founded. That's when the capital market was Kenya founded. Kenya had it 51 years ago at the time of independence. Yes, it so we, we came in a little bit late. But sometime as Tanzania. Tanzania is also around 1997, 98. Mm. Um, so we're fairly... <coughs> we came in so a little bit late. That time, around, the other day. around 2010, I think. Yeah. yeah. The other day. 2010. So for, I think the intervention of the CMA... In, in, in the market is um, <coughs> is very timely. What I don't understand is why it started in 1950, 51 years ago in Kenya. And uh, <coughs> our problems really in Uganda started about 40 years ago. Yeah, Our uh, political problems that culminated in all the, all the business problems, they started about uh, um, in 1971, eh? 40 years ago. The Kenya economy. Mm. Has always been bigger yeah, than Uganda. Really mm. You know who was it? In the country. Yeah, we know, but... Mzungu farmers? Yes. Mm. Actually, the stock exchange in Kenya came into existence in 1951, but the Capital Markets Authority in Kenya came into existence in 1997. So regulation only came in much later to bring in some order into the trading practices. Yeah, but to make you sure also that know that the three, if you look, if you're comparing the three East African states, they followed very different um, policies. They defined themselves immediately after independence. Mm. President Kenyatta immediately defined himself as a capitalist, you know, and they attracted yeah. investment and protection. Yes. Then Nyerere defined himself as a socialist. Just say Nyerere and the boat. No, but he was there and confused at first. <laughs> Nyerere was clear. He defined himself yeah. as a short, as a as a socialist. Yeah. And then Nyerere, oh, but he was not. He had his uh, one, one uh, both, and both feet everywhere. At the end of the let's day, let's go to O um, for his comments, and we'll close yeah. out this topic. This topic yeah, because but close this topic, uh, um, in a minute, yes. In a minute, I, I think that um, the, the capital markets authority intervention. <laughs> finally in the economy of Uganda is very welcome but what they need to know and uh, Mr. Mungereza was talking about it, the small small investors mm -hmm. and my mind quickly went to the Obama fundraising you know how small one plus one makes a million mm -hmm. so I think the capital markets authority needs to aggressively go out and you know tell people more about it and more about themselves because I think there's very little information mm. in, uh, among the people on what you do. It is such a it's such a, a high sounding activity that most people don't even, don't even want to know what it's about. No. Just a quick reaction. Oh, no, no, hold on. Let's have a follow up follow first. Um, oh, oh. Uh, um, the yes. investor. Mm -mm. I think the bottom line really mm. is that you must make your country stable and secure like Kenyans have been for the last many years. And Kenya, yes, was a settled economy of the whites, and so they transplanted many of the practices which were in Britain into the Kenyan economy. And so that stability is what Uganda needs. Now, I did invest for my daughters in 2004, DSCU. At that time, all of them, the three of them were below 18. And my idea was, let me buy for them. By the time they are 18, the money should have accumulated in their bank account. And I think, when I look at the bank statements now, the, the, the dividends that they pay, uh, they are not making bad money. I think by the time they they start working by themselves, they should get used to, mm. to the, uh, that, uh, you call it... Uh, how, how much do they pay out per share? I don't know, but uh, I think... It's, I it's get not a lot of money. I, I get 2.5 million because I bought, at that time, 10,000 shares mm -hmm. per person. Mm. At that time, it was 230 shillings, yeah. 230 shillings per share. The current is about 900. It's 900, but it's actually the equivalent of 1,800. Yeah. So, so, 
Is it? I, I, so, I, I think... <laughs> Those are the confusing things. It's 900, but the equivalent of 1,800. Okay, we must make our country, we must make our country. Yeah, oh, oh, just one second. So Let Keith okay. tell you what is 1,800 when it is okay. 900. There was a one-for-one one bonus share yeah, bonus. by yeah. DFCU Bank, mm -hmm. yeah. which means that if you had one share, you'll get an additional bonus share. Yeah. That's And then the share price literally halved. Yeah. So if there had been no bonus share, it would have been about 1,800. But because it was split, essentially it was a share split, it came down to 900. That's what it means. So the, sometimes... Like okay, the, if, the, you the buy, if, 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 bank if you buy 1,000 shares, they give you 250 shares additional. Mm. No, you got, you'll have 1,000 extra shares yeah. additional. So, it's, so that's, that's what the one for one means. Yeah. So that's why the share price literally halved. So if it hadn't been there, it would have been at 1,800, the equivalent. That's what I mean. Yeah. So I, I was saying that we need to make our country secure so that both the local companies are able to progress the things Mungereza was talking about. Why do companies go down? Companies go down perhaps sometimes because of the politics, sometimes because of management, sometimes because of corruption, sometimes because of inconsistency <coughs> in the national policy. And therefore, I think we need, as a, as a country, as a government, that our policy must be consistent. I do, I, 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 I appreciate the frustration of Mungeriza and the Umeme, but the problem is not Umeme, the company. The problem is your government officials, you Ugandans, because you are the ones who negotiated. With the, you, you failed to run your company, uh, your, your businesses as Ugandans, you went and invited other people to come and help you. Now, if you did not negotiate properly, it is not uh, appropriate for you to fault, <laughs> to, to fault the people you have invited. And therefore, th that does not send good signals for prospective investors that you want to invite from. Because you, you, the, 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 the business is not a philanthropy. The, the, that you think that there are people who are having their good money and they will come and invest in Uganda, which where policy is inconsistent, where your members of parliament are threatening those who have bought your companies with policy reversals. So I think we need policy consistency in, in, in all this. And then our own local businesses should be mentored to maturity so that eventually we move from the eight companies perhaps to a hundred of Ugandan companies. Mm -hmm. Then the, the other one they would be giving confidence to the small investors. The small investors you are talking about are not investing because they are not sure of tomorrow. But once the political security is there, when, if I know I am going to live for the next 30 years, yes, I will put my little money. We, we have seen with the construction now, many Ugandans are building their own houses, which they were not doing 30 years ago. So, this, um, once we have transited that, then Capital Markets Authority should design a policy which taps into the small investors coming to put in the 100,000 shillings worth. Uh, and the, because then they will know it will grow. Years back, not many people were willing to invest with NSSF. Why are many people asking, even private people, uh, five-man uh, five company, people are now saying, can I invest in NSSF? Mm. Because the stability in NSSF now gives the impression that it is a safe place to invest my money. So I need to do as a country. Okay. That stability. Thank you very much. That stability oh, in the mind of everyone. Keith Kaleja, CEO, uh, Capital Markets Authority. Final word on Capital Gang. Uh, final word is that we shall continue reaching out, as uh, Betty says. Uh, well, so far, we've gotten to about 9,000 uh, Ugandans through face-to-face -face interactions. We are going out to companies, organizations, to basically share with them <coughs> how they can get into the capital markets, uh, what sort of returns they'll get. Um, over the next two to three years, we want to get about 30,000 Ugandans. Um, but the reality also is that it may not be for everybody. Uh, looking at the developed capital markets, even Kenya, 300,000 investors, we, if we get to 100,000, I think we shall consider ourselves relatively successful uh, from the current 40,000. And that's our objective. What's the normal, uh, in, a, in, a no, in a normal developed, even half-developed economy, what's the percentage? in terms of the population, if you like. He has told you 300,000 in Kenya. That's miles ahead of Uganda. That's, the, that's an indication. But essentially, it's, you have to be of a mm. certain relative... Uh, that's about 1%. It's about 1%. Something yes. like that, yes. But, and, and he's saying 
we should be comparable to who, did you say yeah, zambia I, I talked about zambia i mean the countries like sri lanka that is about twice our gdp but they have about 200 companies listed mm -hmm. um, so really those are the sort of countries we're looking at um, even even bigger than give us a, a, a target yes yeah. 100,000 he if says 100,000 that would be a good well Keith you faced with yeah. uh, gangsters here and uh, apart from Munjereza because he's already in the financial world what what can you tell or, or hear Katun to and Betty uh, I'm glad to see that Mr. Fono Pondo is already investing um, investing and, and, him, and Mr. sorry Africa. did you say investing yes he's already investing in the capital markets he's an investor yes. he has that on behalf of his children Oh, okay. uh, so I just want to encourage them, all of you, to, to come in. Uh, mm. The best time to come in is during the initial public offer, but yes. if you can still come in at the secondary, in the secondary market. If you have a long-term view <coughs> of, of the market, it's never too late. The returns are not bad, um, and they, they exceed inflation. Inflation has been quite low over. Inflation has been quite low over the past three or four years, um, at about four five, four percent. So if you look at a return of uh, fourteen to twenty two percent, that's a net return of between ten and eighteen percent. That's a decent return for, for for you, the gangsters, and anybody else who's interested. Mm, okay, uh, thank you very much uh, you. for your contribution on. Uh, Gang on 91.3 Capital FM.